All right, we're live. I'm going to play the videos. I want to know how Nelson kept that thing in bound. We'll talk about that later. You gonna lead us off, Schultz? You may go ahead and take over. All right, here we go. Good evening, and welcome to Beer Money Pulling Page and Let's Grill Pulling Live. I'm Leroy Schluter, along with Jeremy Nelson and Misty Nelson. We're in your upper right hand corner, top left corner. Bring Aaron. Give us a big wave, Brent. Middle Schultzy, Jason Schultz, Mr. Beer Money himself. He's coming to us from, believe it or not, Cancun, Mexico. So we're not for sure how his uh, internet signal or his audio will be, but yes, Schultz is in Cancun. The Roos, Ryan Roosink, in your bottom left, and Paul Romack, bottom right. We got our Hollywood Squares. And coming to you from Clint Tucker's basement, Ryan Zolik in the bottom right. How you doing, Ryan? So we are I'm at well. Midnight Motorsport Shop North. When I say north, I'm uh, up here in Sydney, Illinois, about four miles from my house, but out here at the uh, Jeremy and Misty Nelson's shop. When I say north, um, of course, Midnight Motorsport South down in Altamont, Illinois, with uh, Jared and Bethany Nelson. We're going to spend the next uh, three hours or so. I'm just joking. We're not going to do this for three hours. <laughs> uh, speaking with uh, Jeremy and Misty and talking about their history in polling and uh, with the ITPA and the Lucas Oil Pro Polling League. And as you can see in the background, we got the trucks in the back. They got them stacked right now. Let me tilt the camera. The uh, Rhino Ag after midnight on the bottom. And then, the, of course, the Midnight Gambler, the Dodge 1941 Dodge Panel Van up on top. So, first of all, we're going to start out with Misty, okay? we're gonna Misty here's in the middle. Um, your family, mm -hmm. long family, long history of pulling. I mean, starting with your grandfather, Jim, Jim Dallas. Yep. Um, so, tell everybody about the, the history in your, in your family with the pulling. Well, my grandpa um, pulled a modified years ago. Um, actually, that's how my parents met. My dad helped Jimmy Walden, um, which just lives a couple miles away here uh, with his mod. And mom and dad met in Poland. So uh, kind of runs in the family. It does. It does. Actually, that's what I'm So <clears throat> your grandfather, Jim Dallas, and of course your dad, John Moomall, um, long time tech director with the Illinois Tractor Pulling Association. And then he became the vice president of the ITPA. Um, also very involved with Lucas Oil Pro Pulling. Um, got you involved with the ITPA at a young age as a tech official and also a flagger. So what, what age was it, Misty, when you started flagging events for the ITPA? I was 17 when I started flagging. Um, I always told dad as I watched him doing it that uh, I wanted to do what he was doing. And when I first told him that, he told me I wasn't old enough. I had to wait. Um, so when I turned 17, I took the test and the rest is history. Now we have several female flaggers in the ITPA and I'm, you know, obviously the Eshi twins, um, Ashley and Alicia. But uh, back then, did you catch any backlash by being a, I mean, 
we got to remember this is back in the in the eighties. Catch any backlash for having a female out there on the track? It was the nineties. Was it the nineties? I'm sorry. Okay, the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I so didn't. She ain't that old. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, there was a couple times. Well, one time in particular, I can remember uh, Scott Typen was in Illinois pulling. Uh, it was a Decatur, and I was finished flagman, and Scott lost weight at the end of the track. And uh, Dad and Mike Miller come walking down the track, and I looked at them both. I was like, What? Do you not think I can stand my ground? So apparently they thought I needed a little backup on the DQing of of typing that night. I want I want to bring something up. See if you, I know you remember this, but uh, Champaign County Fair, and I don't remember what year. It, it uh, we know now it was in the nineties. Mm -hmm. um, I was announcing that I was up in the announcer stand, and Laverne Knepper took off from the starting line, and he got to what would you say a hundred hundred twenty five feet, and it started going sideways on him. He was going sideways by seventy five foot. Yeah. And the tractor actually started going over. And I believe we had uh, Jim Lukey sled, the Lukey Eliminator sled. Yep. And the only thing that saved that tractor from not rolling over was the sled came forward and caught one of the back tires. Yep. But this was back before our modern safety equipment, no seat belt, no roll cage. I believe he probably didn't have a helmet on either, did he? Yeah. Did he have a helmet? I think, no, on farm stocks, they didn't have helmets, but he did have a ROP, so that helped. And then, but he went over. He, he went over the fender and landed on the track. And from my vantage point, it looked like the tractor was going to roll on top of him. You were the flagger at the start line. Tell us your thoughts on that. It, it was a scary moment. I, uh, I thought that that tractor was going to go over on Laverne. Um, it, it was scary. We couldn't get him moved quick enough. And then uh, obviously we stopped the show. A ambulance came out on the track. And then I think he, he ended up only having like a broken hip or something yeah, like that. Yep. And, uh, he may have even been treated and released, but anyway, that was a, that was a scary, scary moment. So, so you talked about your mom and dad, of course, John and Brenda Moomaw met through tractor pulling. Mm -hmm. Tell us about how you met your husband here, Jeremy. Uh, it was Fairfield, I believe. Mm -hmm. Your story. <laughs> True story. <laughs> no, I said her story. Oh, her story. Okay. I uh, was going around with dad doing some teching and stuck in two wheel drives. And that's when I met Jeremy. So, Jeremy, you come from a long line of uh, pulling family, two-wheel drive trucks. Of course, your father, Dale, um, and then your brothers, Jared, and then also Jordan, um, currently not in pulling with his own truck, but uh, he used to have four two-wheel drive trucks in the Nelson family all together. And uh, um, Jordan may be getting back into it a little bit, maybe with the Simon operation out in Iowa, is my understanding. Is that correct? Yeah, it sounds like he's going to have a ride, but... Just won't be on our team, but he'll have his he'll have his own ride again. So I guess that'll be exciting. We'll all be competing against each other again. So when you started your polling career, Misty, um, at first you didn't have your own truck. You were, for lack of a better term, the hired gun driving Dad's truck part time and driving Jeremy's truck part time. And then I think uh, was it 2016 was your first year having your own truck. Um, it was a Joe stock truck. The yep. white, the white was a Chevy Colorado yep. out of uh, the Michigan. The, um, what was it called? Wild, Wild one? one. Wild yep. one. Okay. Yep. And, and your initial year, uh, I think you finished second in the ITPA points. Mm -hmm. And then, so then you guys decided that you needed your own truck. Well, Terry decided he needed to sell that one. And he had hooked me into a sport that I was already hooked into. And so, uh, yeah, I kind of needed another ride. Okay, so tell us how the uh, the third truck came into the stable, Midnight Chaos. Well, it started at Louisville, like like she said. She put the truck into the finals. That was her last ride for it. and On the white truck. On the white truck. Right. And the last run on it was in the finals, and then it went home with the new owner, and all me and John heard about was, poor me, I don't have a ride now. So, and we had done, we knew that the truck was sold, going into Louisville. So we done had talked and me and him had a chassis bought from the longs that was just sitting in their barn. And so we had done started on what would soon to be midnight chaos, but yeah, you wasn't going to give her a taste and then leave her hanging. Cause 
neither one of us was going to put up with that all summer. So we knew we had to find something and that opportunity opportunity presented itself. And we had enough spare parts laying around luckily to throw something together. And that's what it was, was spare parts. But it was literally a week before the first pull in Wilmington, Ohio. And we had parts scattered all over the shop and, you know, Dennis stopped by and he helped quite extensively and, we loaded it at 4.30 in the afternoon to go to the first pole and hadn't even hardly started the thing. So it was literally a thrown together deal. And so Wilmington, Ohio, that was, that was a two day pull, right? A Friday and a Saturday or was no, that just, was just, just, one, day. just a one day event? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so you loaded it up <clears throat> and then you discovered you didn't have a name for the truck. So you had midnight motorsports and you didn't have a name for Misty's truck. No, we didn't. We didn't really know what we was going to call it. It, we knew it had to be midnight something, but, you know, guy that drives for me, Bogey, drives my semi, and he's like, well, seems like this is a bunch of chaos around here. He said, I think it ought to be midnight chaos. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. When you add a third truck to the stable, that is chaos. So it, we talked about it on the way down there, and that's when the truck got its name. We all agreed on it, and mm -hmm. it went out and won the first hook. And oh, yeah, you're stealing my thunder here. I was going <laughs> to say, Sorry. so the very first time that midnight chaos is hooked to a sled, is at the Lucas Oil PPL event in Wilmington, Ohio. And there was, if I remember, 25, 26 two-wheel drive trucks there that night. Something like that. And yeah. so the very first time pulling your own truck, not a Joe stock truck, but your own truck, yep. you take home the win. Yep, that was amazing uh, to be able to throw that truck together and and get it loaded up in time to make that first hook and, and to go out and beat the trucks that were at that event. It's amazing. So that was the 2017 and you ended up being the ITPA points champion that year for the uh, Illinois Tractor Pulling Association and um, very special year for you guys that year. So if, if I had to ask if you have a favorite track that you pull on, it could be one that you pull on now or one that you've pulled on in the past. Is there, is there a, a certain event that, uh, that you can remember that was, stuck out in your mind or, or one that uh, when you see the schedule release for the new year, you, you circle and say, I can't wait to go there. Not really. Um, maybe Wilmington, which we don't go there anymore. Um, there's definitely ones that I don't like going to. Well, I mean, we won't say that. We don't want to yeah. make any promoters upset, <laughs> but uh, there's tracks that are just not nice. Yeah. So what, what year was it? What I believe it was a 2018 that you guys actually tied for points. You both finished the year when the Illinois Polling Association, Illinois Tractor Pulling Association with 312 points, I believed. And what the tiebreaker was, was number of wins. Is that correct? And you yep. had one more win. Jeremy had one more win. He did. Yeah. Take me through that, Leroy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we came down to DeCoin, the final hook of the year, the DeCoin State Fair. Yep. And, uh, you you act did you actually win the event that night or you no. won the, so you had to win tell it, you, tell it right you had to win the event to win the points championship and actually if if anybody in the class would have beat me that would have give her because it took the win away from me so i needed the win to break the tie so she was rooting against everybody you know everybody that pulled after me she was rooting against me so her dad i mean jared <laughs> steckler jamie austin i mean she didn't care. She didn't want her husband to win. Yeah. <laughs> one but way, guess what? One, yeah. One way or the other, the trophy was coming back to rural Sydney, the it championship. Was. So, and then, uh, what was the, what was the distance? I could have looked it up on power and noise, but the distance was like less than six inches apart from each other. Was well, I thought it was like 16 foot or something. <laughs> no, I don't think far. it was that far. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that far. So, yeah, that's what everybody don't realize. We're, yeah, we're a team, but we're pretty, uh, pretty competitive in our household too. So it's, it's all in good fun, but trust me, I, I was a lot happier on the ride home from the coin than if somebody else would have won. Now, if I had to ask you, what was one of your least favorite tracks, I would say DeCoin, even though you won the championship there, I know you guys don't like going to DeCoin. Is it because it's the end of the year? Is it the track or just so far down there for an Illinois hook or what's just a harvest time of year. It's on a Tuesday night. I mean, I'm not opposed to going anywhere. It's just timing's a lot of it with us. And, right. You know, when John was around, he used to always, if there was a pole to go to, you go pull, I'll go farm. But we don't have that now. So I got to kind of look out for both sides of it. So love, love going to DeCoin. It's just 
pulling in September, especially needs to be on a weekend. Yep. So Tuesday night doesn't work. Hey, Jason, if you can hear me, I want you to pull up some of those pictures that I sent you earlier. Um, let's start out with the, uh, the oldest one. I think it was a 2004 photo. Okay. So here, <clears throat> if everyone can see that, um, let me see what I sent Jason. So this is the, the two wheel drive trucks in the lower left corner. That's the truck that you're currently pulling, but it looks a lot different now than what this picture was. I think you got fourth in points that year. Um, than the midnight gambler and, uh, it's, it's gone through quite a bit of uh change since that time. I got to pull up the photos here myself. Stand by. <laughs> Pulled up some of our old ones. Yeah, there we go. The 2004. So then uh, your brother Jared won the points um, that year, and uh, your dad got second in points. Chad Mayhill, <laughs> the tire cutter, um, got third. And then uh, you got fourth. And Jace Bandolo, there's a blast from the past. <laughs> and two stepping, he was the fifth place truck that year. J Jace and his dad, Greg Bandolo. Greg, currently a flag man and a tech person with the ITPA. Okay, go to the next picture, if you would, Jason. Um, this would be 2010. Okay, so now <clears throat> your dad won the points championship, and now we see the familiar Nelson candy apple green. All right. What year was that? This is 2010. That was the first year for John's truck. This is the first year. This is the initial year for the Chevy SSR. So his first time out the gate, he was the points championship. And then uh, we see the candy, candy apple green um, on your truck. And then uh, your brother Jared is sponsored by Rockstar that year. And then there's your brother Jordan when we talked about. Um, so we've got uh, um, the three brothers, Jeremy getting second, Jared getting fourth, and then uh, your brother Jordan getting fifth. Jer Jordan currently working for RJ Simon. So we go to the next picture, and this would be 2012. Okay, so now we get rid of the candy apple green. John once again wins the championship. But if you look at the third place truck, you picked up a new sponsor, Speedco. I think uh, you picked it up for the two-wheel drive trucks and did Bill Leishner pick it up for a super modified at the same time. Yeah. So Speedco truck lubes. Um, and then so obviously their corporate colors are the blue and yellow. So you would, was it a hard decision getting rid of the candy apple green and going to the blue and yellow or? No, but it was, it was an interesting story because we'd heard that there was something coming. That's the year we won the PPL championship. And right. they said, we got something for you sponsorship wise. I said, well, I'm repainting the truck anyway, which was in the plans. And we had painted the whole truck white and we was just going back green and white. Just, it needed some work. And me and Mark and maybe Jonah was there at the time. That's back when NCP hadn't even hardly started yet. When he says NCP, he's talking about Nelson custom paints. Yep. So we was just kind of doing it as a wintertime thing and refreshing and mine up. And the truck was all white. The green paint was literally on the paint shaker. We was ready. To, we had the flames masked out. It was going to be green and white. And John Mears called and he said, Hey, I got something for you. And he said, it's speed co. I was like, well, what's this mean? I said, what their colors are blue and yellow. And he's like, yeah. So I got on the phone with speed co instantly and they're like yeah we'd kind of like it to be blue and yellow so we just stopped the painting process for that day and over a week week and a half long ordeal we figured out it was going to be blue and yellow so then we remasked everything and changed the colors and unveiled it at louisville that year but they was about an hour away from having a green and white speedco truck and then you carried the speedco colors or the, the speedco sponsorship for an additional three, th four years, three or four years. And then they got out of the motorsports altogether. Well, they sold out the loves and yeah, that one thing led to another and they was done with the motorsports and we kept the blue and yellow because the blue and yellow, I become accustomed to it and I really liked it. So that's what we still have today. Not saying it's set in stone, but we have another body in the works that, is a replica of this one that, mm -hmm. you know, with Pioneer that we could go back green and white, some old school maybe, but who knows what the future holds. But right now I don't have time to mess with that. So it's, it's what you're looking at. And Pioneer's been great with the blue and yellow. So 
that's what we're sticking with. So where did you get this body from? It, it's a it's a 1941 Dodge panel van, correct? Yep. Okay, I got into an argument, not really an argument. Someone wanted to argue with me. I don't know if it was on a polling forum or Facebook or whatever. But they're, they're, they're saying it might be a 1941, but that's not a Dodge. That's a Ford. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I didn't want to get an argument. but Well, I hate to tell anybody they don't know what they're talking about. But that's they don't right. know what they're talking about because <laughs> that's been a Dodge since the day we brought it home. And I can remember like it was le yesterday. I was probably Tanner's age, and me and my dad took a single cab pickup and a gooseneck trailer up to Green Bay, Wisconsin. And he'd been looking at two-wheel drive trucks for a while. I don't, time gets away from me, but I don't know if it was months, years, what, but he took a hiatus from pulling and was trying to buy chassis and then we was going to put a body on it. And he found this one. So I don't know why I got elected to go with him, but we did. And I slept on the floorboard of this truck. We got there the night before and and I knew it was a van, so I was instantly in, intrigued by it because mm -hmm. it was different. And uh, we got up there, went to breakfast with the guy, and Dad was buying the chassis. That was, you know, that was already done. And it was a question of if he was going to buy the body or leave the body and come home and put <laughs> like a truck body on it. And I remember him asking him at breakfast, "What, what are you going to do with that body if if I don't take it?" And the guy that we was buying it from said, well, I'll probably take it behind the shop and cut it up with the chainsaw. Mm. And I'm like, dad, you can't let that happen. I said, I like that body. So somehow or another at 12 years old, he listened to me and we brought it home and it's been my kind of my pride and joy ever since, but it's, it's had several thousands of hours invested in it to make it look like it does today. So it has definitely uh, been reworked several times. It is a beautiful truck. Jason, if you can go to the 2015 picture um, on this. Okay, that's not the 2015, but we can go to this one. This is the year Misty won the points, 2017. Okay, there's the 2015. You were the points champion this year with the ITPA, and then John was a runner-up. Um, I believe this was Beth Bethany's in this picture, Jared's wife Bethany in the uh, fourth-place points. This was Bethany's first season of pulling, correct? I believe so. Yes. With the, the warrior yeah, tracks. Yeah. This is uh 2015. Um, once again, carrying the uh, Speedco sponsorship. Okay. Go to the next one. If you would, Jason, 2017. And this is the one where your first, first, first year pulling full-time Misty and your own truck, not the white Joe stock truck, but your own truck, midnight chaos. And uh, first place in points, Misty. And then uh, look who you beat for second, your dad. And one of the reasons I want to show this picture I believe this was the first year that Rhino Wag came on board with Midnight Motorsports. Is that correct? Yeah, I believe so. So, so once again, getting rid of the uh, candy apple green and going to black with the Rhino Wag sponsorship for uh, John Newmont's truck, the Rhino Wag after midnight. How was how was that um, received, or you know, going going to a black pulling vehicle? That's something out of the out of the norm, out of the stable. Yes, that it definitely is, especially when you had candy apple green and white. And I know when John, John and I went and pitched the idea, neither one of us was crazy about it, but we liked the Rhino Ag. You know, they're in Gibson City. They're mm -hmm. based out of Gibson City. He's like, we got to get our foot in the door. So I said, yeah, I said, I agree. I said, we can wrap it and that, that'll be fine. And got our foot in the door and. I ain't going to say he was overjoyed, but he was tickled to death to be representing a sponsor on that truck. So, and then they come and brought us a, a bat wing mower and we lined the truck up and, you know, I still think it'd make a great commercial, you know, right. fire that thing up and pull the mower around and throw a big rooster tail. But, and we always talked about that. We just never got it done, but we did a photo shoot and had the rhino ag mower hooked onto the back of the truck. And it, I mean, it made a great, picture opportunity and the rhino ag people have been great and so i mean it was great to represent them and we're still representing them to d this day and i don't know if john would be tickled to death right now or kind of <laughs> perturbed that we got rhino ag on and we're back to his green and white colors because he loved his green and white colors i'll tell you what <clears throat> john was an awesome representation mm. for rhino ag um not only winning uh 
points. He won points championship both on the state level and also on the national level with Lucas Oil carrying the Rhino Ag sponsorship. Oh, correct. That was right after he right after, yep. got Rhino Ag, or right before. Right before, so he it was a year before. Okay, well, I knew that he was a, a national champ too with the Lucas Oil, but I thought that it was when he had the Rhino Ag. But needless to say, he was an awesome representation for uh for rhino wag okay one more picture to show jason let's go to the uh 2019 photo okay now this one here has got <clears throat> all sorts of things written all over it <laughs> starting out with your dad's truck your dad won the points championship with the illinois tractor Pulling association truck called last chance okay um i think he finished sixth when the uh, lucas oil points that year so won the points championship you know, our last hook was there at uh, DeCoin end of August. And then uh, about two weeks or so before our ITPA banquet um, had a shed fire. Was he cutting with an acetylene torch or using some sort of torch and caused a spark? And Yeah, he was grinding or doing something. And said the next thing he knew, he was laying on the floor and the shed was engulfed in flames. And So he lost the shed. Lost, lost the, the pulling truck, lost his motors. Um, but in the meantime, from the conclusion of the pulling season and time of the fire, he got an invite to the National Farm Machinery Show, the pull in Louisville. Yeah. And so now he's got an invite in hand to come pull at Louisville, but no truck. So you got on the phone. I believe you got on the phone with Mike Witt. Is that correct? And Well, I was down. I went down there when Jared called me and. He was on his way out there and said, said, dad, shop's on fire. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So I didn't get a response from him. Like, well, you know, is he okay? Is he in there? So I, I mean, it seemed like two hours and I'm like, I'm just taking off and going down there. I mean, it's 90 miles from their driveway to mine. Mm -hmm. So I just took off driving and I got about halfway there and he called and he's like, no, he's fine. But you know, the shed's still burning. So I just went ahead and went down and said it was toast. I mean, we didn't know if the truck was in there, if the truck was out in the trailer. And then we found out in the meantime, the truck was in there. He was working on it. Spare motor was in there. I mean, he got the trailer out of the way, but everything else was gone. And he was a kind of a wreck when I got there. Well, I'm sure. I mean, rightfully so. Well, so, he, he had been, a long time puller in a two wheel drive truck class. And then he, and then he sat out for a while. And then when he, I think he went out to New York and got this truck. Right. Yeah. And then your mom helped him name it, said, this is your last chance. Yeah. This is your last chance of pulling. <laughs> so that's the name of the truck. Last chance. Yeah. And then that was his last chance. And he won the points with it and got into Louisville. You know, he hadn't pulled in Louisville and well, I don't know how long, cause he, you know, he'd always turn the reins over to us, but I can remember watching him our first year in Louisville. He was in the C cab and I don't know if I was old enough to drive yet or not, but he was driving. And that's the last time I remember him actually pulling in Louisville. So, so tell us how it got to be where he had a vehicle to pull at Louisville after his points championship, but he obviously didn't pull last chance. So no, on the way home from Aldemont that night, I'm like, because that's all he talked about was, well, maybe I wasn't made to pull at Louisville, you know? So I'm like, you know what? My truck didn't get into Louisville because, you know, they're only going to let so many Nelsons in, which I get it. I was, I don't know, ninth or 10th in the points or beyond. And so he got in and I was happy for him, but I'm like, I'm not letting this go by without at least a shot. So I called Mike Witt on the way home. I'm like, just left dad's. I said, his truck burnt down. I said, if you'll have it, I said, I'd like to let him run my truck. Mm -hmm. And if not, I understand, but you know, he earned a spot, so he'll drive my truck. And if that's all right. And he said, well, I got to check with my board, but he said, I'm going to tell you right now. He said, I don't see a problem. And he called back the next day and he's like, you're good to go. So then I had to start getting mine ready because yeah. I wasn't planning on taking my truck to Louisville. So so we got it ready and that was the first time he'd ever drove that. I mean, he owned it for, I don't know how many years, but he'd never pulled it at Louisville. And I don't know how many years it'd been since he'd been in the seat of the panel van, but. So he drew the Wednesday night flight, Thursday, Thursday night, Thursday night flight. And he won. 
won won the Thursday night flight and uh, qualified for the finals on Saturday night. And uh, did did he end up with the podium finish? Did he end up in the top three, or what did he finish? No, I think he ended up sixth. On, six, okay, on Saturday. But the, that's the the other funny part of it was I don't know how many years I've drove it down there, but that truck had never been in the winner's circle. It's I put it in third place, but he drives it the first year and the gambler wins on, on prelim night. So mm -hmm. it was, it was a good night. I mean, we needed it. That was a, a year on the anniversary date of John's accident. So we needed some kind of pick me up. So it's funny how things work out, I guess. Yeah. When you look at that picture again, of the, the uh, top five in points for uh, 2019, you see that your dad <clears throat> as the winner and you were the runner up that year. Um, of course, we didn't pull in 2020 because of COVID, but uh, you were the runner up with the Rhino Lag after midnight with, with John's truck. Misty was third. And then uh, with your uh, Midnight Gambler was fourth. And then if you recognize that truck in the lower right corner, that's the Austin truck. Jim Austin's truck is pulled by his sons. That's the Bowling Green ring winner. Since uh, there was no Bowling Green in August of uh, 2020, this is the truck that won the ring in uh, August of 2019. So a lot of strong iron right there, two-wheel drive trucks right here in central Illinois. So anyway, so let's let's talk to you again, Jeremy, a little bit about um, there was one summer back in uh, the mid-2010s, 2015, 2014, you got on a hot run. You got on a very hot run where – it's starting in August, just every end of July, August, everything just started clicking, and you reeled off of a number of victories. Kind of like in the, 2011. 2011 was that the year that uh, that was the year for Mike. Mike Walden passed away. Yeah, yep. and then uh, on the back of your truck it says "Hammer Down." And of course, we used to have the Hammer Down pole at the Champaign County Fairgrounds, and uh, whenever you guys loaded up and headed out to a pole, that was wasn't that the last thing he always said that was, was "Hammer his Down." Favorite phrase. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, he passed away in February. We went to Louisville and did good down there, and we deemed that year the the Hammer Down Tour. And, yeah, that was that was the team's first championship, so I never will forget it. And I don't I don't remember what the what the win ratio was, but I know it was the whole month of July that truck won and several others. I mean, the way it ended up, it won, like, almost half the events, and – that was just unheard of at the time. And I remember me and John leaving New York after we'd won and was figuring the points and figured out we'd won it where all we had to do was show up at the last few. And it was, it was pretty exciting moments. We was headed to Bowling Green to watch Sunday session and right. we knew we'd locked up the PPL championship with two hooks to go. So that was definitely a special year. One I'll never forget. Now, speaking of the PPL champions, every year at the Champions Tour, one of the things that they give away to the winner of each class is a custom painted helmet. All those helmets get painted right here at NCP, correct? Nelson Custom Paint? Yep. Yeah, they do. Uh, we started that in about, oh, John won in 2012 and 2013. So I think we started in about 2013. John Mears called and asked if we'd paint the helmets and... I got an airbrush guy, Ken Johnson, that comes in and airbrushes for me. And, you know, it's a, a person don't think that helmets are very big. It shouldn't take you that long, but it's literally probably a three to four week process of laying all the helmets out and what we want on them. And then he airbrushes and letters them and, you know, we clear them, put them all back together. So it's a process. We didn't do as extravagant of a job this year, just COVID year, COVID so we year, had to do yeah. something different, but Mir still wanted to do helmets, so we just did an all-black helmet, and he hand-lettered them all, you know, to to match the, the lettering on the trucks, but yeah, that's something we've done for several years, and it we enjoy doing it, and I think it's something that kind of sets PPL apart from everybody. Instead of giving a trophy, they got a, a helmet that matches your vehicle, and you know, some people wear them. A lot of people set them on the shelf. So it's, but it's something different. You know, some people actually wear them in competition, huh? Yeah, some people do. I got John's, I got John's first helmet in there in the office, and then I got the one I won. So it, I mean, it's kind of neat to look at them and you remember the yep. year and what happened that year. So 
I know I'll, I remember mine and John's first championship. So, sure, for, the, for the ones that don't know Jeremy and Misty Nelson, tell us a little bit about your family. I know you got two kids, um, Kayla and, and Tanner. So uh, tell us about the their ages and their interest. Is, uh, I don't know if Kayla has any interest in pulling, but I'm sure Tanner can't wait till uh, yeah. till he turns 16 and can get behind a wheel. Yeah, Kayla's 16. Um, not not a whole lot of interest in pulling. Um, plays volleyball, runs track. Um, but as far as pulling, she goes because we make her go. But yet she's got an awful lot of friends, you know, across the country that that she's met through pulling. Tanner, on the other hand, he cannot wait to get in that seat. He's 12, and uh, yeah, he's he's ready to kick either mom or dad out. Does he want to pull a two-wheel drive truck as well, or does he want to get in a mini rod or anything like that? Please don't put him in a garden tractor. But His first choice would be a four-engine mod, but we told him that <laughs> that's not going to happen. So, Reese Shelton's told him that he can drive the mini anytime he wants to. So now, Was it last summer or summer before? He actually went and spent some part of the summer with, with Shelton's, didn't he? 2019, he spent a week with Shelton's, and yeah, loved every minute of it. They, they took him and... He he noodled. I mean, he pulling out catfish as big as him, and, and you know, and that's just down in North Carolina. Right? In North Carolina, North yep. Carolina. Yep. yep. So we I, last Schultz had texted me and said there's almost 300 people watching tonight. He had said there were like 288, 287 or some people watching a while ago. If anyone's got any questions for Jeremy or Misty, um, I think you can fire him to Jason or fire him to the show. Hey, Roy. Yes, go ahead. Uh, so go ahead. And Jeremy doesn't have to answer this, but Porter Collins mentioned uh, we're supposed to ask about the golf cart filled with toilet paper night. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that was back before I could even drive. That was Alito, Illinois, I think it was. That was back when we was just little rugrats hanging around the pit area. Had an overnight stay at an Illinois pool and I don't know. We found a golf cart with a key in it. So <laughs> needless to say, we had a good time. I'll ask you the same question, <clears throat> Misty. Do you have a favorite track that you've pulled at? I would have thought, I, what was Phoenix like? I know you, what, what, is that about the farthest you guys went to? We didn't we go didn't to go Phoenix. Phoenix. You didn't go to Phoenix? Uh -uh. Did they have, they had two wheel drive trucks there, right? They did your did, dad go? <laughs> oh, I thought you guys, you didn't make the trip. Okay. Oh, no, John. John wanted to go awful bad, mm -hmm. and it was well. It was after Louisville. Time to get ready for farming. Like we don't need to go out to Phoenix to pull. So if they have it next year, maybe we'll plan ahead a little more, little better. But no, we didn't go. Now they did add uh, Benson, North Carolina. Well, you guys used to go to Saluda, South Carolina. That mm -hmm. used to be a regular on the stop. This year, the uh, Galat Motorsports Track, Benson, North Carolina, is a new event for the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League. I'm sure that. You guys are going to hit that, right? Well, that's the plan. As long as farming permits, I mean, the end of May is touch and go with, like I said, I don't have nobody to do the farming when I'm not <laughs> not around. But I hope by the end of May, middle of May when it is, that we're done and uh, ready to head, head south. But as you can see, one of them back there don't have a power plant just yet. So we got well, one ready to go. But well, that's why we got one. the camera angle, so they can't really <laughs> see the motor there on the top. Well, one. there should be something sticking out the hood of that. Yeah, there's, there's nothing in the blue one. Yeah. So so do you have a favorite track or one of the favorite tracks that you like pulling at? No. Any of them I've won at are my favorite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that might change from year to year. So, Tell us about Goshen, Indiana. Goshen, Indiana, the Elkhart County Fair. The... Uh, I'd seen videos, of course, Jesse Post does an awesome job for your PR, for your YouTube videos and on Midnight Motorsports Facebook page and that. And anyway, I'd seen videos years and years and years of you guys pulling at Goshen. And I'm thinking, this is a middle of a day, a Thursday afternoon pull, and the freaking stands are packed. I'm like, mm -hmm. do these people not have jobs? Well, then when I started working with PPL, you know, we did that. <clears throat> live stream on uh, Lucas Oil Racing TV when I go up there and do that pull, I get out there at 8 o'clock in the morning and the stands are like half full at mm -hmm. 8 o'clock in the morning already for a pull that I think starts at noon or whatever. And it's I mean, that way every year. Yep. They get, you know, quite the following from, and it'll be that way till whenever the evening session ends. So 
it's definitely uh it's definitely different going and pulling in front of a pack stands in the middle of the afternoon but you know and then that's another thing too um all the different pulling surfaces all the different dirt you guys pull on like you know in east central illinois or in illinois you pull on a lot of black dirt you know and when you guys go south you pull on a lot of red clay okay. that's kind of a sandy track if i remember up there at, yeah. uh, at yeah. goshen yep. so uh, how do how do you adjust to that you did, when you read the track and it's just an educated guess i guess after looking at dirt for 20 some years i guess you learn to make your educated guess and we put our heads together as a team you know me jared my dad don't have john anymore but you know that's one thing about john is he'd only pulled for a handful of years but he'd stood on a lot of tracks so right that was kind of pretty valuable but we all just take a guess at it and you know that's the first guy out is kind of the guinea pig and sometimes that's the best one but sometimes you can overthink it too and everybody mm -hmm. thinks more information is better but sometimes we get worse as the the class goes on on how we hit the setup so it's all just a guess dave truey says i remember up oh, the, the tim ostober says i think jeremy needs to go for a twisted tease sponsorship dave truey <laughs> says i remember when they were young helping greg bandalo lots of memories yep greg and greg and jace pulling the uh, dodge ITPA dakota for a lot of years two-stepping Hey, hey, Leroy, I was going to yes, ask Jeremy, Jeremy, you kind of dipped your toe into the mini rod class there for a while. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? I'd like to do more of it. I can tell you that. <laughs> that was, uh, that's been a couple years ago now. Terry Jostock built a mini rod and he's, I said, when I found out he was building a mini rod, I said, that's cool. I said, just one, one request. I said, and we'd built several trucks for Terry, you know, that's how Misty got started. And we'd built one for Bethany. That was Terry's truck that she ran for a year. And then, you know, Corzine's had some that, that was Terry's that, so we, ha I have, a, I have a good relationship with Terry. And I said, one request, I just want to drive that thing one time. And he's like, Oh, you can drive it. I said, okay. I said, I'm taking you up on that. Cause I have always wanted to drive a mini rod. And we, first time I drove it, uh, trying to think where that was Toma, Toma. Wisconsin mm -hmm. the first one I drove and and then he built a new one I mean I was hooked from the first one but then he built a new one and we took it to Henry Illinois and not knowing nothing about anything and won the class last pull in the class and then we was hooked so but then he sold it you know that's, that's what Terry does he builds something and then sells it and if there was more mini rod pulling in Illinois when I sold my chassis a couple of years ago, I probably would have built a mini rod. It's just a completely different feeling, not saying the trucks are boring, but that mini rod is just a whole different feeling. And we had a ball with it. it there, there's times when it was a lot of work, you know, running two vehicles in two different classes and trying to stage one class and pull the other class. But you know, that, that one year we run Terry's mini rod six times and I think we won four of them. It's like, <laughs> boy, I think this is a class we need to be in, but you got to sharpen tires all the time and you got to run them so much harder. So it was, it's definitely a lot more work than the two wheel drive class. Plus, like I said, we like running in the state of Illinois close to home. I mean, we got probably a handful of poles here that are within an hour of the house. So we like doing that too. Of course, Chuck Hobbs, he's the uh, mini rod fan, the uh, leprechaun pulling team. Chuck helped us out with some announcing up there at the uh, Midwest Winter Nationals up at Ship Shawana here the uh, first week in February. Glad you're tuned in tonight, Chuck. Um, we talked about the uh, Speedco sponsorship there for three or four years. As you can see in the background right now, you, you're carrying Pioneer, Pioneer on the Midnight Gambler, and, of course, Rhino Ag on the uh, After Midnight Truck. Who are some of the other sponsors? I know you guys wouldn't be able to get to these poles and get up and down the track without uh, sponsorships. Why don't you give a shout out? Tell tell everybody who's helping you guys out for the 2021 polling season. Well, the big the big two that help us out a lot is obviously our power plants. You know, Sassy Engines, John Card, Miss Carol. Hope they're watching. I don't know if they are or not. It might be past their bedtime, but they've uh, they've really taken the Sassy name and kind of made it their own and made extensive changes. That's why. The one up top now doesn't have a motor because 
we have enough faith in them. I mean, we done pretty good with what we got. And Jared's got one that's power plantless as we speak now too. So we're switching two of them to the, the new latest and greatest sassy setup. John Struck's going to have the tried and true older sassy, but still, you know, very competitive, but we're going to, we're going to put all our eggs in one basket with mine and Jared's truck and have everything that kind of John believes in. So brand new SSI superchargers on board. They've been great over the years, giving us, you know, the best blowers we can possibly get and keeping us at the front. So without those two, those trucks, all our trucks, you know, and we have all the same kind of setup on all of them, supercharger wise, the motor combination, we're always trying something different. This year it's going to be mine and Jared's Bethany's and Misty's will still be kind of the same what we ran last year. So that kind of gives us a, an edge. I think, you know, if the new stuff works, then them two are ahead. If the old stuff works, then, then we still got something reliable. So, and you guys always carry a spare motor in your trailer as well, right? Well, we try to, I know last year, Mound city, Missouri rumble by the refuge. Friday night was not so good. was not so good for you, Misty. So, and then uh, when I roll into the track there on Saturday afternoon, <clears throat> I knew not even to bother you guys. You guys were in deep tearing the old motor out of the Rhino Ag after midnight, dropping a new power plant in. And you got, you were running up on Saturday night, correct? Third. Third. Okay. Yep. I knew you were in the, in the top there. Um, Chris Waggle, if you're watching, man, that was a half of a party. Saturday night. Oh my goodness. That was a, that was a fun time. Yep. Let's talk about the year at Louisville when there were eight, eight qualify for the finals, right? For the two wheel drives. Mm -hmm. And so it was almost an all female final. You had um, yourself was in there and Lisa Tatum and Bethany. And wasn't that the year that, uh, uh, she won her. Well, she won Louisville. Actually, uh, Ashley Ashley Corzine won I don't know Louisville. If that was all the same year or not? Was not it? Sure. I think I think there was four four gals in the finals that year. Was Renee in there too? I don't know. But anyway, that was uh, it's like an, almost an all female final that year. So yeah, and speaking of Mound City, I mean that's why they say females are better drivers because they don't have to work on them and they don't <laughs> give a shit what's tore up. And Mound City is proof of that because. Lisa she just yeah. kept the hammer down I, and it was I, throwing parts out left and right. It so. wasn't throwing parts out left and right, but I, <laughs> I definitely had a blonde moment. And when it changed sounds, I didn't back out of it like I should have. And uh, kind of like Jared Steckler at Sarah Gordo a few years ago. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't that bad. <laughs> uh, it was pretty bad. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, Lisa Tatum, she won on Saturday night mm -hmm. at Mount City driving dad's truck. Yep. The uh, part city. So. Any other questions? Any questions from our moderators? Brent, I know you uh, at Mound City, you got caught up there on uh, running a camera about 20 feet off the ground in the thunder and lightning and the pouring down rain on Friday night. And then uh, your motor, Saturday night. <clears throat> motor went out on your scissors lift and you were stuck up in the air, couldn't come down there for a while. Yep. Good thing I had a bucket of beer. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk to Ruth Nick. Every time he comes and talks to me before a poll and asks me, what that magic run feels like we have a killer run so i Ryan, wonder if we might i wonder more, if we might talk about that <laughs> i hadn't had that in, in probably two years and we talked to hillsborough wisconsin he's like well how do you know i was like you just know i said it sets you back in the seat and you swear at half track that you're gonna go out the end and gonna have to back out of it and <laughs> i walked by him and he's like that was one of them, wasn't it? And yeah. Just kind of give me a fist bump. I was like, yep, that was one of them. That was a one in 10. Mm. So I got a couple of questions. Um, how did you guys arrive? Or I guess this is, I mean, it's about John. Um, how did you guys choose an SSR body? Nobody else has them. Well, very few. There's one or two. But you guys have one, and it's arguably the most famous SSR body pulling truck in the world. How would you get there? Well, John and I talked about that when I finally told him that we was going to build him a truck because he'd been talking about throwing a state truck together and spare parts. And I'm like, listen, if we're going to build a truck, it's going to be top notch from the get go. That way 
I said, if, if you build a state truck, it'll be fine for a couple of passes. And then you'll be like, okay, what do we got to do to be competitive with you? And uh, I said, I don't want you whining when I'm kicking your butt. So you're going to have the same <laughs> stuff I do. And we talked about bodies. And at that time, the Colorado, the older style Colorados was just coming out. And he's like, well, I guess that'd be all right. I said, or we can do an SSR. I said, there was a, there was a couple SSRs out there. And I like the body style, but I didn't like the way they was mounted, the way they was done. I said, I think one of them could look really good if it was done right. So he ended up going, going with my gut and believed in me. And we, we ordered an SSR and first thing we did, I never will forget. We had a brand new body and he's like, well, we need to do first. I said, well, we need to cut the back fenders out of it. He said, well, why we need to do that? because it needs to set lower so we cut the fenders out of a brand new body took them up about oh i don't know three or four inches he's like boy that's a lot of work for three or four inches but after we got it all done he's like yeah that does that does look a lot better but that's why and i thought the ssr kind of somewhat resembled you know mine with the big rounded fenders and i just wanted something unique and he kind of did too so i'm glad we went with that because if it was a Colorado or Ford Ranger, it'd just still be a another truck. But when you say SSR now, you kind of relay it with After Midnight and John Moonmall. So that's kind of neat. Terry Furchill has a question. Is Arthur on your schedule for this season? Mark your calendar, Terry. Thursday, <laughs> July 15th. The Moultrie Douglas County Fair, Arthur, Illinois. And yes, the 6,200-pound two-wheel drive trucks will be there. And Schuyler County Fair, there's another question. That's in Rushville, Illinois. That's Thursday, July 1st. And two-wheel drive trucks are going to be there, too. <clears throat> Schuyler County Fair is where your dad <laughs> got me in trouble. Yes. Oh, man. Schuyler County Fair, real quick story about that. That was when they were still pulling on a Friday night, and we pulled in Wyoming on a Saturday. Um, the beer pavilion had a kick-ass band that played till 1 oh, o'clock in the morning. And um, it was Ashley Corzine's birthday, too, right? Wasn't it? And then yeah, right around everybody birthday, else yeah. was going to go to the infield at 1 o'clock in the morning to party a little bit with Ashley and then go to bed. Well, they got this quote unquote secret bar on the uh, grounds there at Schuyler County Fair, the Paddock's Paradise. And John wanted to go there. And he said, come on, Leroy, come with me. And Misty was saying, no, dad, just <laughs> come, come, come back to the end. He goes, nope, Leroy and I are going to the bar. And Misty looks to me and she says, you're in charge of my dad. <laughs> We were there till 3.15 in the morning. Yes, she was. And when we left there, he said, Leroy, give me a piggyback ride to the infield because I don't think that uh, I can make it, but we made it. So, Eric Pruitt, thanks for tuning in. Mr. Pure Horsepower News. Um, Eric's telling you guys have a safe and trouble-free planning season. And uh, we'll, we'll tell Rex Homan, yes, I like pulling in my hometown of Aldermont. That's my favorite county fair <laughs> in the whole state. So, you going to be pulling there. That. Several times this year, added a yeah. new event. Yes, they the, added another event in June. So the I seventy showdown. I seventy showdown. I can pull that up right here. That's uh, let's see here. Uh, I seventy showdown will be Saturday, June nineteenth. The light supers, six thousand pound super stocks, two wheel drive trucks, the four wheel drive trucks, sixty eight fifty Pro Farm, the four ones, and the eleven thousand pound Pro Farm. So. Mark your calendar for that one. Effingham County Fairgrounds, the I-70 Showdown, June 19th. That's in addition to the regular fair that they have. Um, so we have the champ, the PPL Champions Tour there on a Saturday night, and then the ITPA hook there on a Monday night. And then do you guys pull there on Wednesday night? with no. the? No. Okay, I didn't know if you guys had to pull there a third time or not. So. No, they'll be tired of seeing us after three yeah. times. <laughs> yes, so Dan Shaw. We've yeah. already talked about uh, what Jeremy would choose if he had his uh, something other than a two-wheel drive to drive. What about you? What would you? What would you? Uh, whose ride would you take for the night, and why? Oh, I Please don't know. Please say pro stock. Please say pro no, stock. It's not a pro <laughs> stock. I guarantee it. I hold the down. I guarantee it. No way. Uh. I guess it'd have to be a multi-engine mod. I mean, it'd be, you know. That's what Ashley's driving now, the light unlimited. Yeah. 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 
I, yeah, probably have to be a multi-engine mod. I just I can actually show you Ashley's new ride. It's sitting right over there. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not a multi-engine mod. Another two-wheel drive. Craig won Louisville and kicked her out of the seat, so she's back to a truck, slumming with us truck folks. <laughs> we need to uh, <clears throat> lift up the camera here in a second. So over there in the corner, you see the cardboard cutout of John and Brenda, and then. Uh, also, there's John's fire suit back there. John's rhino egg. His fire suit is that his helmet too that he wore? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the last fire suit and helmet that he wore. That's the last yep. fire suit and helmet. And then, so you can see there the uh, the trucks um, stacked on top of each other there. The rhino egg after midnight SSR on the bottom, and then the midnight gambler on top. And as they mentioned, there is no motor currently in the midnight gambler. So pretty cool. We're out here at. Uh, Midnight Motorsport Shop also doubles as NCP Nelson Custom Paint. Meeting with Jeremy and Misty Nelson. Um, any other questions? Otherwise, what we're so the Mumo and Nelson family. No coal, not a tea bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered if Cole was watching. I can't see who's watching, but I figured that he'd be watching, and he might have a smart remark. Yeah, he is not a member of the family yet, but as of April 10th, he will be. That's awesome. Cole Zytrek, and he was the uh, outlaw pulling champion for two-wheel drives, right? Is that correct? Uh, I think his dad might have beat him. Yeah, did, his, did Whitey yeah, win? Next one. I mean, they always win, so. Yeah. You go to Texas, you know you're going to get whooped by a Zyjack. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Or Louisville. Yeah. I kind of feel like we need to find some neutral ground and have uh, a little Zycheck Nelson showdown. Maybe Iowa. We Wait, can find a place in Iowa. Come and play at Peoria one time. We yeah. we did get in there. So Louisville and the Outlaw Poles figured out. We got things in the works too. Maybe he'll be driving a big truck. Never know. He won't know what to do with a roof over his head. Oh, no, he right? wouldn't be able to back to the sled, would he? Right, he wouldn't. Okay. So Dave both got a good or good comment. He called the blower your truck. The and not a few years years so at Rushville Fair. You said we want to give this say to the young fan and and parents basically handed it to me. And that picture, the IEA program. So, and then the, the next year is the kid who got Jeremy Nelson's blower bell here tonight. He, he, we couldn't get him to come out on the trip. So, anyway, that was, that was a fun time. So, so, always a fun time when we were over there in Rushville. I throw my glasses every time a question comes up. <laughs> cool, I check. He won with my trip. Hey, but. Speaking of outlaw pools, Rusick, next time we go out to uh, Rock Valley, Iowa this year, hope you have uh, <clears throat> better luck going out there and not blowing any tires. So, Yeah, I, 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 I would kind of like that, too. Ryan's <laughs> – I guess audio of the camera, so we're not going to do that anymore. We're not going to move. Are we back Are we back good with uh, – out? Stabilized in the audio wise. Yes. So, okay. All right. Good yes. deal. All right. Any other questions otherwise with a tribute video? And the reason we're playing this at the end of and toward the beginning because no matter how many times you video it's play every time. Oh, From pull organization, swing league, and my association. I'm going to wrap things up here by thanking you and thanking you, me, uh, for being on first of all here tonight. Um, you guys are great for the sport of polling, both on the national level and also on the state level. And, uh, I'm glad to call you guys my friends, and I'm glad for you guys joining us tonight. Any of the other moderators have any questions for these guys before we have uh, Schultz hit play on the tribute video? 
Just wanted to thank you guys for coming on. We really appreciate it. Yes. Hey, the other, thank you very much for coming on. And I'm going to go start drinking now. I stayed sober all day, so I wouldn't screw this up for you guys. I promise. Yeah, that's you're very impressed. Your efforts are noted. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> Thanks, Shul, for running your thing. And if you can hit play on that video, and we'll see you guys next Monday night, 8 p.m. on Beer Money. Let's Grow Live. To win in the two-wheel drive class, you have got to go through the Midnight Team. We still got to struggle, but we're going to work at it real hard. The Super Modified Two-Wheel Drive class has featured different winners at each event with last year's champion, John Muma, and After Midnight using consistency to take the points lead. Good equipment to use on the farm, but you've also got a good piece behind us here as you're currently in the points lead. Yeah, we're, we've been fortunate there, too. Of course, we've only had two events. Uh, we've got a long way to go yet. Um, but yeah, we, we've done well. We, we haven't won, but we got a second and a third and just being cons the word consistent, there it is. But uh, that's, that's the key and, and that's why we're in the lead right now. But we got a long way to go. He was up on the podium. Matter of fact, a win at the second hook of the season. And John just stands on the throttle and goes out there, puts 309 and 32 on the board, and that's good enough to jump up into second place. Boy, well, kind of hopped, and then the second time it planted the rear tires, picked up the front end, and went out of the gate. 328 and 12, we have a new leader. Well, John Muma in the after midnight tonight charges hard at the end of the pull to put yourself in third place. And I know that it's been a little bit of a tough road to hope for you this year. Yeah, it's been a struggle. We, uh, the truck won at Memphis back in May. I wasn't driving it, but it, it won. We come on pretty strong here towards the end. We done what we done and it, it worked out great for us. Congratulations on your podium to end the season. Thank you, thank you. motivated to keep coming back. It makes it so exciting and enticing. I, I enjoy the sport.